You're probably watching this video because you saw the last two vlogs where I went abroad with my family to San Domingo. We explored the city and I got cosmetic surgery. So this will actually be our last installment because we really liked it to share our experience abroad. This video is going to be a mix of me talking to the camera. And I'm sorry, because I absolutely hate when people talk and talk and talk to the camera. And video smashes me from day one of recovery right until now. Okay, so let's jump into the recovery process right now. So what's it like getting surgery? So day one, all I remember is waiting. Uh, they came in, they brought me a little blue pill to help me to like, to put me to sleep, I suppose. I didn't fall asleep though. I, I got all the way up, they wheeled me up to the operating table and I was like, oh my gosh, this pill didn't work. I'm a wide awake. This pill didn't work. I'm gonna feel everything. I'm just gonna be paralyzed in my bed. I had all these crazy thoughts, y'all. I had too many crazy thoughts. They put the anesthesia in the IV and I was knocked out. It was like I was at going to the operating room in a wheelchair and I woke up in my bed. That's all I remember. When I woke up, I was, and this is a funny story, I was a little salty because I was like, where is my husband? Where are my children? Where is anyone? It was, it was just myself and the nurse, of course, but I was expecting them to at least come visit me. So I was like, oh my gosh, where's my phone? Where's my mic? Where's my money? Because I had left all this stuff in the room before I went to the operating room. And the nurse is like, you told your husband to take it with him. I was like, what? I told my husband? She's like, yeah, your husband was here. I was like, my husband was here? She's like, you don't remember your husband? So I guess like the anesthesia doesn't wear off because I literally don't remember Ian coming to visit me, the kids coming to see me. And like, I had to call Ian to verify like, did you take my money? Did you take, did you take the mic? And he was like, yeah, you told me to. Your brother came through y'all. He did not leave me in the hospital after surgery. He came to see me. So after spending one day in the hospital, then I was able to go to the recovery house the next day. Warren, who's one of the owners of the recovery house, came to pick me up from the hospital. So they had gave me so much morphine for the pain that it was, I was just uncomfortable. I wasn't in a state of pain. I was just so uncomfortable. But by the time I left the hospital to the recovery house, y'all, that morphine started to wear off. I was crying, I was crying. I, I cried to my husband, I called Ian. I said, why did I do this? I should have just done this. I should have just le left myself alone. But they gave me my pills and it was like, oh, I forgot everything. I was I was fine. If you did not follow the other vlogs, as you know, I ended up getting a reduction. Um, I had a muscle repair, which also gave me like a slight, like also a tummy tuck because they're repairing your muscles. And honestly, like everything from my stomach up was fine. Like what wasn't fine was the muscle repair. Like I needed Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Allah, Buddha, like everybody. Cause that was, that was the most painful, uncomfortable procedure of muscle repair. Um, a lot of people travel to the Dominican Republic for cosmetic surgery. They're doing it more for looks purposes. So they're coming for BBLs, they're coming for liposuction. I didn't get any of that. And everyone kept telling me that lipo is the worst, getting a BBL is the worst. And I was like, not that it was on my list, but this is more confirmation that I would never do that because the muscle repair, Oh my gosh, yes, that was painful. It was very painful for me. So day three is when the switch finally kicked in and it was like I had no more pain. Like I wasn't crying, um, I could walk because from day one, day two, like I needed help going, walking to the bathroom. You know, they were fluffing my pillows, feeding me, washing me, bathing me, tucking me in. Like it was like being a baby. Like I couldn't do anything. Like I could, nothing. So by day three, it was like, okay, I can do it. Uh, I could go downstairs. I could get up and walk around in my walker. I started recording some footage even. So day three is when the light switches and you're like, okay, I'm okay now. Okay, you guys, day three. I'm walking like a little hunchback, but I feel so much better. Maybe it's day four, I'm not sure. It's Thursday though. Got my surgery on Monday and I'm walking downstairs for the first time ever. Oh, let's see if I can do it. Mira la más bella nurse en todo el mundo. He's That's my nurse. I told her I could do it by myself. She's like, go slow. So 
had three main nurses, Lisbeth, Marina, and Andrea. These nurses were amazing. I mean, first of all, black women, y'all, you know they took care of me. Literally, they held my hand when I cried. They laughed with me. They danced with me. They kept my spirits up. They, it was just an incredible team of humans. You look nice. Good morning, beautiful. I know, look at me. Up and moving. And you are not hunched over. I mean, oh my god, that blue is so pretty on you. It's Zeta Blue. Zeta Blue. Yes, rep your sorrows. Woohoo! That's what's up. I made it to breakfast, you guys. You made it. Oh. The food here was so good, I literally felt like I was at a restaurant every single day. It was fresh, it was served hot, it was flavorful, they were very intentional. So there was protein at every single meal, all the juices were fresh squeezed, and I'm a big food person, like it matters to me what I eat. So number one thing about recovery was the food. I do everything in my room for massage. So anybody will tell you massages are essential to recovery. They help with the inflammation and like the flow of your blood and just everything. So I just had my first massage with Yobi, who's the actual masseuse here. I feel so much better. Like I'm talking better, I'm breathing better, I'm less swollen. And I love how she explained like what's the point of the massages. So I can't wait to get my third massage tomorrow. Plans to do 10 massages what's recommended by the doctor so I am now going to relax right here so it's Thursday four days after my initial surgery you can tell I'm standing up on my own I feel straighter I can hold the camera and I'm on my way to do my post-op my first post-op checkup with Dr. G so I'm walking well I'm not walking Walking down the stairs to get driven here right now. I've literally never been back here before. It's where they do the oxygen trials. Y'all, it is officially one week. It's officially one week, so seven days since my surgery. Um, I just got done with my first oxygen treatment, and like a turn was took. Like I'm in there, like excited, happy, like saying, "Okay, we're going to oxygen chamber." But I don't know, for whatever reason, since I sat down, it was like the walls were closed in on me. Like they had to get Sherelle in there, Yolanda, like it's gonna be okay. And like the main reason why I had booked the recovery house was at the time they were running a special of three free oxygen treatments. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna get in this thing. But Sherelle came in there and she was like, you're gonna get in this thing. It's good for your health, you need to do this. And like, that's one of the good things about being here at a recovery house and having like a surgery sister with you because I don't think I would've gotten there. I was like, y'all can open this. What if I get scared? Like I was imagining like them closing the door on me and they'd be like, no, you're trapped. They would not do that. But I had to like literally reset my brain. I'm so happy that I got in there, I did the whole treatment. I, I pretty much was good. Like once you're in there, it's, you know, the oxygen's flowing, it's comfortable, it's very clear, you know, they were making jokes with me, and then I just watched TV the whole time, but it was, I was like, oh my god, like, I don't know if you guys know that Mr. Krabs meme, where he's like, oh, like the whole world is turning, like, as soon as I sat down, everything got real, real scary. Your page. Oh, I'm in the outside world for the first time in four days, and it's hot, y'all. Buddy Andrea, 
Andrea. Hello. Back at it again. <laughs> Okay, I just got into the room, so now I'm about to get this roll and get my checkup on. Post-op appointments were pretty basic. You went to Dr. G's office, you met with Dr. Santana, who's also one of the doctors there who helps with recovery. They check in to make sure your incisions are okay, there's no infections, and that you're yeah. healing well. I just didn't realize it was gonna be like that close to me. I think also I'm so tall, so I take up like the whole chamber. How are you doing? I'm doing good. good. How is the pain? It's, I have no pain. No pain? No massages? Great. What are you doing? On Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. Anything? Anything you need? Okay, any concern? Anything you just let us know. Okay, so now that I am one week post-op and I have energy, I can give you some tips. These are some tips that I wish I would have known before I actually came to my post-op surgery. Okay, so tip number one. This is a shiwi. Tip number one is to use this shiwi prior to surgery. Is this up? Is this up? Like, which way does it go? It actually goes this way. It's clean, you guys. That's just water. Use this shiwi thing before you have surgery and you're all hunched over in excruciating pain, so you actually know how to use it. Don't use it the first time after surgery. Tip number two, y'all don't need all those clothes. So this is my crazy closet that my maid cleans up for me every day. But either way, I got all these like sundresses. This is a dress that I brought. I brought this dress right here. I brought another dress here. Y'all not gonna wear those dresses. Right now I'm literally in a muumuu. You need to bring like, maybe just a robe. So like I spend most of my time my faha and I put this robe on, like all you really need is a robe and like maybe five giant t-shirts and then like two dresses to go out in for your appointments. Which brings me to my third tip. You definitely wanna make sure that your dresses have pockets or like if you're wearing a shirt and shorts, make sure your shorts have pockets. Why? Because right here I'm hiding my drain in a pocket. So this is my fourth tip and I probably will do like some type of reel to show you like all the food that I've ate. Um, so this is my fourth tip and this is for like all the fat girls and fat girls at heart. I love food. You should choose your recovery house based off of food. So I'm in a group chat right now with a bunch of ladies who are in the, who are all, July and August getting surgery done with Dr. G and they all are at a recovery house and the food is trash. Now guarantee like they're close to CSEP, they're close to their appointments, but you're not going to see the doctor every day. I've been here a week and I've seen him one time since post-op and then like even at my recovery house, I can get medications delivered I can get um, a pedicure, I can get a facial, there's oxygen chamber, like, you're not going anywhere, you just had surgery. But what you are going to want to do is eat. Man, when I tell you that I feel so much better, and I don't know if like, this is day 10, and I'm like, this day, you feel better on day 10? Like, the only thing is like, I wish I would've brought product for my hair. Like, I left my hair product at home, so my locks is looking crazy, but outside of that, my body feels better, my spirits are feeling better. I'm gonna like, the stage two faha, I was nervous about it. Like I thought it was gonna hurt. I feel it's so much more comfortable. My drain's out. I, like I think if you're watching this and I put clips of an older version of me, like day one, like you'll notice a complete difference. I feel really good. So by day 10, I had done a lot for my recovery and had got a lot of support. I walked a lot around the house, outside, I went to the mall. I also went and got a pedicure, I ate empanadas. I did one and a half more oxygen treatments. Y'all, I could not get in that chamber for to save the life of me. But I really think it all helped in my progression for the recovery. So here are some pretty tame pictures that I took before I had surgery. Again, the main reason why I got this procedure was because I was becoming uncomfortable and having a lot of back pain, but I knew that my body would change and a lot of women get cosmetic surgery for the sole purpose of looking different, which I believe women should have that choice. So here are my results for those who are wondering what I look like now. So for the first three months, you have to wear your faja 23 hours, seven days a week. So I just got out of my faja, so there is a little bit like of gauze and tape residue that covers all my uh, incisions and scarring. So if you see something, that's all it is. I'm accentuating, showing you like, wow, my waist looks so much smaller. Um, the sun was in my eyes right here, so I'm just covering my eyes. But again, also you can see I'm way less top heavy. 
I'm so much more comfortable. I'm very happy with my results. I'm still not healed, so that means I'm still very swollen, but I love everything so far. Also, my belly button is not completely healed either, so it looks weird to me right now.